Hi there, today we'll tackle a car hood, which will be fully veneered with natural wood. No, this is not a film, this is a natural American walnut. A lot of difficulties and experiments, but in the end we achieve the intended result. Enjoy watching! In order to sheath the hood with the wood, you first need to make it. We'll make it out of fiberglass. For this, Andrew wraps the matrix with wax. Here, too, you need to know the subtleties. First, the wax must be applied evenly, to approximately such a state, and then wrapped until the stains disappear, which you see on the screen. And the hood, by the way, is from BMW in the back of E30, which is already considered a classic. The next step is to apply a gel coat to the wax hood. This is something like a primer. Thanks to it, the front side turns out to be smooth and almost ready for painting, but in our case for veneering, but more on that later. These fiberglass hoods are most often made in two parts, and each part is made separately, which is why you see two mattresses in the frame. The next step, when the gel coat is dry, dilute the polyester resin, mix the two components well and apply as evenly as possible with the roller. Then we put fiberglass and thoroughly saturate it with the same polyester resin. This is exactly the layer that will give the structure rigidity, since the fibers are impregnated with resin, and after hardening a very strong and lightweight structure is obtained. This is why such parts are used in tuning, when it's necessary to lighten the body, and such a hood will never rot. In order to spread the fiberglass as evenly as possible and get rid of all their pockets, such a roller with thin metal fibers is used. Thus, we put on two layers of fiberglass with a density of 150 the first one and 450 the second one. This density means grams per square meter. Then we proceed to the second component. To do this, add aerosol to the resin. Thanks to it, the resin becomes thicker. And now we apply it to the future stiffeners. Here are the same skin gel coat, resin and fiberglass. The next day we take out the blanks from the mattresses, and here you can clearly see what the gel coat is for. As a result, the surface is almost perfect. Of course, if the matrix is initially ideal, since this compound will make an exact copy of the surface, respectively of all flaws if there are any. But as you can see, Andrew's mattresses are flawless. And so we have two parts that remain to be joined, but we first cut off axis. It's at this point that the hood takes on its original shape and becomes similar to the hood. Subsequently, all these ends are processed manually using a block. To join the two parts, we again use the matrix. It helps a lot with positioning, and as a result, it's impossible to miss. We put markages in the hinge attachment points. To join the two parts of the hood, we'll use filler. It's a special compound made for these purposes, something like glue. And here's a little life hack. We put the compound in an old silicon tube with a spoon, put the cork and use the usual method, which greatly facilitates the application.
and the filler is applied evenly around the perimeter, we join the two mattresses and tighten them with belts. The next day we disassemble the sandwich and we have an almost finished hook, which can be painted or not painted as in our case. It remains only to grind the ends in order to remove excess glue. Our main task is not to make the hood, but to veneer it with natural wood. This is why I found myself 300 km away from home in order to personally select a couple of veneer strips. This is really important, as each sheet is individual and different from each other. I was choosing the right option and in the end I settled on American walnut. I managed to choose a couple with a very large and expressive pattern, which is what I originally wanted, so it wasn't in vain that I killed a day on the road. And Andrew killed more than one day for this project and even managed to break his finger, what, by the way, he told about in a very interesting way on his Instagram. Now we need to make a canvas that will completely cover the rear of the hood. For this, Andrew glued all the sheets together. In order to evenly press on such a healthy veneer sheet, we use a vacuum, in our case DIY, one made of cellophane and sticks. Cut off the suitable piece and put the hood in the back. It's clear that no one particularly veneered the hood, as we didn't find detailed instructions on the network, so we decided to experiment. First, we put the veneer on the hood without glue, in order to understand whether it will be possible to press it evenly against the hood. and glue the film around the perimeter with a special sealant. As it's on a self-adhesive base, the result will be a sealed joint. We put a tube inside, with the help of which we'll pump out the air. We connect it to the compressor from the refrigerator and start the process. In general, everything worked, but of course it was not without flaws. Everything worked too well and the face side of the hood buckled due to the vacuum. Here, by the way, you can see a dent, which does not suit us at all. Therefore, we are redoing everything anew. We cut our back in order to create a vacuum only on the front side. Respectively, we make a new border with the old sealant. Testing without glue again, and as you can see, now everything is OK. Therefore, we can do the same, but with glue. We pre-grind the hood so that the compound stays on the surface. After that, we are gonna assemble the sarcophagus. For the test, we used a veneer sheet that was smaller than the hood. It was made for convenience. So now it remains to build up a few more strips. We 
cut them to size in place. We decide to glue the veneer to the hood using polyester resin, which cures quickly, and we mix it. We put the veneer on the resin and on top of the film, and now it remains to join the upper film with the lower one. As you can see, everything worked out great. The film presses the veneer over the entire area, and Andrew checks and helps with his hands in the bending points. A few hours later, the resin set and we remove the film. In general, everything is okay. There are small nuances that can be avoided only with experience, but the technology is working. The next step is to grind off the protruding resin, after which you can start painting. We degrade the hoods from all sides. It was decided to paint the inside in universal black color. We'll paint the front side with the glossy varnish and we'll tin it in order to emphasize the wood and tin it better. After a few layers and a couple of days of drying, we proceed to the most interesting thing. We go to a place where there are many BMWs E30 in order to try on the hood. We have ambitious project in the future, so we would like to ask you to help us distribute this video. Like, repost, and a couple of comments. Ideally, we can chat in the comments. Thanks for watching and catch positive attacks from the axe.